Let's talk about MM Detection, one of the most popular computer vision libraries with over 25,000 stars on GitHub, yet I bet many of you didn't use it or even heard about it. Today I'll show you how to install MM Detection in your Python environment, which is not so straightforward as you will see, how to run the inference with pre-trained Coco model, and last but not least, how to train the model on custom dataset and benchmark it. If you don't know, MM Detection is part of OpenMMLab, a set of over 30 vision libraries covering topics from detection and segmentation up to stuff like action recognition and human pose estimation. MM Detection is by far the largest library in that ecosystem and it allows you to train and deploy dozens of popular models like DTR, YOLOX, and RTM Debt, which by the way is the model that we are going to train today. RTM Debt's speed and accuracy is comparable to other state of the art real time object detectors, but as part of MM Detection, it is distributed under Apache 2 license. This makes it a very interesting choice for anybody looking for a model that can be used in enterprise or closed sourced project. To make our life easier, I prepared a Google Colab that we are going to use to train the model. The link to the notebook is in the description below, but you can also find it in Roboflow Notebooks repository, along with other demos and examples. Now let's scroll just a little bit lower into the model tutorial section. And for now, the first link from the top is RTM Dead Object Detection. Let's click the open in Colab button. That should take us to Google Colab website and we are good to go. In the top section, you can read more about RTM Debt model. Take a look at the benchmark result, comparing its speed and accuracy with other top real-time detectors like YOLO V6, V7 and V8. We also linked the RTM Dead paper and our blog post covering the model so you can read and learn more about models architecture if you want. Okay, enough of the talking, let's dive in. The first thing that we are going to do is to run NVIDIA SMI command, just to confirm that we have access to GPU. After a few seconds, you should see the output, similar to the one visible on my screen. It shows you the exact GPU model and the CUDA version you have. If you don't see the same result, that probably means that your environment is not GPU accelerated. In that case, try to follow instructions in the notebook, change the runtime type and you should be good to go. Now that we confirm that we have access to GPU, we can install all required packages. We will need PyTorch along with four libraries from OpenMMLab ecosystem, MMCV, MM Engine, MM Detection, and MM YOLO. Because I'm using Google Colab, I already have PyTorch installed in my runtime. If you try to set up project locally, make sure to visit PyTorch.org and pick the right installation command. All you need to do is provide information about your operating system, the hardware you use, and the PyTorch version you want to install, and the command will be generated for you. As for MM Detection and the rest of OpenMMLab's libraries, the instructions you see on the screen are coming from MM YOLO installation guide. Interestingly, the recommended way of installing OpenMMLab packages is not through PEEP, but through their own package manager called MIM. And if you take a look into commands running in the notebook, we can see that the first thing we do is install OpenMIM from PEEP, and then we use MIM to install the rest of required packages. I know, it's weird. This is probably the first time I'm using proprietary package manager to set up my Python coding environment. Before we start to play with RTM Dead, we have one more step to go. We need to install Roboflow and supervision packages. Roboflow will allow us to download the open source dataset from Roboflow Universe. We will use that dataset to train the model later in the video. Supervision will give us a bunch of useful computer vision utilities that will help us to filter and annotate detections, process datasets, and benchmark the model. 
One of the best ways to confirm that the installation process was successful is to run pre-train model on example image. To load the model with MM detection, we need two things, config file and the weights file. Config file is model recipe, but it goes way beyond network architecture. We use it to define training and validation datasets, data processing pipelines, hyperparameters values, or even loggers. All of those properties are defined in a reusable way, so you can simply copy and paste them between configs. I will tell you more about configs and how to customize them in a second, but for now, let's just focus on working with pre-made configs. Config and weights files for all pre-trained models supported by MM detection are listed on GitHub in tables like this separate table for every model architecture. RTMDET comes in different sizes, ranging from tiny to extra large. In this tutorial, I'll be using RTMDET-L. I looked up the weights address for this specific model and I'm using wget to download them to my hard drive. The config file is already there as it was part of MM YOLO repository that we cloned a few minutes ago. Now we can use an example image and run inference. In my case, I'll be using photo of me and my dog. The model is pre-trained on Coco dataset, so it should be able to pick up person, dog, car and a backpack in the image. So let's try it out. We load the image and run the inference. The first time we do it, the actual model is being loaded into the memory. That might take a little bit of time, but once the loading process is completed, we can run the inference and examine the results. We will visualize them in a second, but first let's print out the results object. We see that it contains prediction instances with labels, boxes and scores fields. It's not the most complicated structure to navigate, but to simplify our post-processing even more, we will use supervision. We can simply use the from MM detection method to ingest the inference result. And with three more lines of code, draw the detections on the source image and display it. Interestingly, instead of just few bounding boxes, we have hundreds of them. Looks like MM detection is returning all results without any post-processing. Let's use supervision to solve that problem. First, we add confidence filtering using 0.3 as the confidence threshold and additional non-max suppression. The rest of processing stays the same. And when we annotate the image with our new results, we are only left with valuable detections. Awesome. Of course, to train custom model, you need data. In principle, MM detection expects your dataset to be in Coco dataset. However, it requires your category and image IDs to be numbered starting from one and not zero. Most frameworks don't care, but for MM detection is kind of big problem. Trust me, I spent hours trying to debug it. To save your time, we decided to add additional export format to Roboflow, very similar to Coco, but fully compatible with MM detection requirements. In this tutorial, we will use Domino's dataset I found on Roboflow Universe. I included the link to the dataset in the description below. Now let's open the dataset card and click download dataset. Select Coco MM detection format. Click continue and after a few seconds, we get a code snippet that we can copy and paste into Colab. When we do that and run the cell, we will see a prompt with link that we can use to authenticate. We click the link to open the Roboflow website. Now we can generate the token, copy, go back to Colab and paste it. Once again, run the cell and the dataset is being downloaded. Depending on the size of your dataset, it might take few seconds or even minutes to complete. Once it's done, we can open Google Colab File Explorer, navigate to MMYOLO data directory, 
and inside we can find the data set we just downloaded split into train test and validation subsets i'll be honest crafting a custom config file was probably the hardest part of this project in theory it should be very easy pick the model you want to use modify its config and you should be good to go in practice, it took me four hours to figure it out. Luckily for you, you can just use my config and have it done much faster. As I said before, in this tutorial, we are using rtm.l as our based model. I found its original configuration file in the mm YOLO repository and copied it into Google Colab. Then used Python string formatting to inject our variables. We will add information about the dataset location, the classes we want to detect, and some training hyperparameters that we want to customize. I also configured TensorBoard Logger as I want to examine metrics after the training is completed. Now we can save the updated config file on the hard drive. It will be stored in mmyolo configs rtm dead directory as custom pi. Once again, we can use Google Colab File Explorer to navigate to that catalog, and we can even open the file to make sure that it is filled correctly. Looks like all our variable names were replaced with corresponding values. Once you have the data set in correct format and the configuration file properly crafted, the actual model training is very simple. All you have to do is run the train pi script and wait for it to finish. My data set is quite small, so it shouldn't take more than an hour to train the whole model. Still, let's use the magic of cinema to speed up the process. Now that the training is completed, we can examine training metrics. As I mentioned before, we configured MM detection to use TensorBoard logging format. Let's visualize that data and take a look. First, we need to pass the path to the training log directory. We should be able to find it in MMYOLO work dears. There is only one subdirectory custom. The name corresponds to the name of our configuration file. Now we can pass it as log dir argument value and run TensorBoard. After a few seconds, TensorBoard will start. Let's close less interesting charts and focus on validation set loss, loss box and loss class. We can see that all three were converging. There is no sign of overfitting here. As a matter of fact, I'd say we could keep the model training for a bit longer and squeeze a bit more accuracy from it. Okay, let's benchmark the model to understand exactly how accurate it is. When we run Confusion Metrics Benchmark, we see that the model is performing well. Most of the detections are on matrix diagonal. That means that they got classified as true positives, correct detections. Only a few of them uh, are in the bottom part of the image, classified as false positives, and few more have the correct bounding box, but with incorrect class. Before we wrap it up, let's quickly calculate the overall MAP and per class MAP. In both cases, we got around 0.7. Most classes score similar except PEEP3, where the score is around 0.4. Still not bad, but significantly lower than with other classes. We'd probably need to dig deeper into the dataset to understand the reasons for it maybe the class is simply underrepresented. Overall, there is a high chance that the model will perform well on production as long as it will receive images coming from similar distribution, so a similar setting, lightning, and camera angle.
that's all for today i hope this video will inspire you to use mm detection and hopefully you will learn from my mistakes watch out for dataset format if you use roboflow make sure to export your dataset in coco mm detection and not the regular coco format if you use your own dataset make sure your category and image ids are numbered from one and not from zero if you plan to train rtm debt you should be good to go with my configuration file if you want to train other supported models start with pre-made config and make sure to include information about training set and target classes that was the biggest problem that took me the most time to figure out if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more computer vision content coming to this channel soon. My name is Peter and I see you next time. Bye.